fresh surface of our bryozoan sample. We're going to start with 120 grit, then move to 600, and then to a polish. So we're going to get our polishing plate, and we're going to put a little bit of the grit onto the polishing plate. Then we add water with this handy water dispenser. And we place the side of the bryozoan that we want to grind, in this case, a longitudinal surface. And we want to grind with nice figure eight motions so that every surface of the bryozoan is being ground evenly. It's very important uh, that in between each grit you thoroughly scrub off the surface of the bryozoan. And it's best to do this in a sink um, and wash it off into a bucket so that the grit doesn't go down the drain. So I'm going to rinse the surface. And you can use something like a toothbrush or this little scrubber brush. But make sure you get all the grit off. And you want to make sure you keep your uh, sample with your box. We want to make sure to clean off our polishing plate. So we're going to rinse off all the grit into the previously mentioned bucket. Wipe it off with our hand to make sure that it's nice and clean. Or you can dry it with a towel, like so. And then you want to set it aside so that it can dry for the next time you want to use it. So now we're going to move on to 600 grit. It's a little finer, as you can see. We're going to put some onto our polishing plate. Add a little more water than last time because this is finer grit. And then again, we're going to polish the same surface we were polishing before in nice figure eight motions to get every angle of the surface. So don't forget to thoroughly scrub after every grit. And rinse. And with each progressive grit, you're going to need to scrub it a little bit more thoroughly because the grit is more fine grained. Lastly, we want to use polish to get a nice smooth surface on our sample before we begin the etching process. So same as before, add some water. Take your bryozoan. And use those nice figure eights. need to scrub all of this polish off. Like so. And rinse it. Now you can take both your sample and the box and place it inside the hood with the surface that you've polished face up. Safety check! All right, before we start the etching process, you want to make sure you suit up in full lab gear. Always practice safety first. So notice I'm wearing my lab coat, my gloves, and my goggles, because we're going to be working with a hydrochloric acid solution. So since we're going to be working under the hood, we need to make sure we prepare the hood. And really all you have to do is turn it on, and then turn on the light. Okay, so first we want to pour the acid in to our little acid jar. So carefully. Make sure we screw the lid back on. Set that to the side. Then we're going to fill this uh, beaker with some fresh water. So now we're all prepared and um, 
ready to start etching. So, I used some tweezers and pick up the bryozoan and um, we're gonna we're gonna put it in the acid for about at least 15 to 20 seconds. So, starting at 5 seconds. You want to swirl it around. Next, you want to just rinse it off in the water. You want to do that for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then you're going to set it down um, face up. Okay, so now you want to make sure you properly dispose of the materials that you use. Um, so we're going to start with our hydrochloric acid. And we're going to pour it into this tub of limestone um, so that it neutralizes the solution. And then we're going to pour this down. And now our next step is to wait for our bryozoans to dry um, so that we can make the acetate. acetate sheet that uh, we're going to slice up so that we can make reasonably sized peels. It's best to score the acetate so that it's easy to break apart. Oops. And now we have a little acetate sheet. It's very important to clean off all the residue that's on the acetate sheet. So you don't want little particles to get caught between the sheet and your uh, sample. So now we're going to make the SD film. We're going to take our sample and acetone. Get your sheet ready. You're going to flood the surface and quickly drop the, uh, the acetate sheet on top of the specimen. But don't press hard. So. Alright, so now we're going to uh, take this sample and we're going to put it to the side and let it dry for at least 10 minutes. So the final step in creating a bryzoan peel is to remove the bryzoan from your acetate sheet so that you can look at your peel. Now to do this, you're going to want to just pop it off without bending the sheet. Sometimes it's a little more difficult than others, but if you twist a little, <laughs> it'll pop off and you have your peel and it's ready to look at underneath the microscope.